Hey, that, that, what's going on is this is the best time of the year for us, and I think a lot of people in general when it comes to the sports calendar. And I don't know, I don't think anything shows off the uh, power of the predictorator more than seeing a bracket in 67 games and 68 teams and the likelihood of making it to any level as we have available now on the site. You've got to get some of that premium gasoline or something for that computer, because I'm sure it's going into overdrive this time of year. It definitely has, but especially with the recent updates to certain teams, we've had to keep playing and replaying it 50,000 times. There's a lot that goes on, but that fortunately it only takes about 30 to 40 seconds to run these games. Or right. run all of the games at one time. We always start by liking to give people a primer on kind of what you do, what the site is that you guys do. So just give us the, the cliff notes, the overview, predictionmachine.com. Uh, take it from there. What What goes on? Yeah, our mantra is that we play the game 50,000 times before it's actually played. And what that means for a college basketball tournament is that we have all 10 players interacting that we assume are going to be on the court at any given time, interacting statistically, if you will, within a computer, uh, through on a play-by-play basis, trying to gauge just how likely just a anything is to happen. Coaching plays a little bit of a role, fortunately, for the most part, they're neutral courts. We can expect that, and everybody's trying their hardest. So some of our assumptions are pretty easy to make here. But what spits out when we run these games 50,000 times, and in this case, when we want run an entire bracket 50,000 times over the course of the, you know, running each one into each each entire tournament individually, we get a likelihood of the team making it to any level of the tournament. Fortunately, this has been pretty successful. This would be my ninth tournament doing this professionally. The previous eight, six of them ended up in the 99th percentile or better in when name your Bracken pool, but, so, but we track them on all of the portals. And we've also been similarly successful when, when if you're headed to Vegas, picking games straight up against the spread and, and on the over-under when it comes to this time of the year. So it's a great Great time to be using this kind of information, and hopefully people can find a lot of this information, which is free on the site, uh, of great value when, when filling out a bracket for any reason. No question. Paul Basir, PredictionMachine.com, the website. And I will say this as well. Uh, let's give you and everybody a mulligan for last year because, come on, that, that bracket just went into the sewage like, like one week into it. We calculated the likelihood of the, that specific Final Four at one in 93 million, and if you're if you're doing the math on it, we didn't simulate it for 93 million times. So <laughs> no, at no point did that actual Final Four happen. One of the biggest reasons for it is because you saw a a team that had to play in the opening round go on to ultimately make it to the Final Four, which is means that the, if you would assume they're about 50-50 likely to happen, that halves your chances of uh, of, of winning their first game. That half your chances of of just being able to get that exact tournament bracket. I could uh, figure it out. So we'll see how it goes, go, how it is going forward. I think we have identified a lot of those kind of mid to low major teams that people wouldn't typically uh, typically be talking about that could make a deep run, a la the VCs and Butlers that we've seen in the recent years. News this afternoon: Fab Mello is out for Syracuse. Uh, you mentioned, you know, kind of playing and replaying and redoing it. How much does that change mm-hmm. things for you? Well, Syracuse was already the least likely number one to make a Final Four. They don't even get to the uh, the Elite Eight more than 50% of the time, which is great news for Ohio State fans, obviously. We actually already had Ohio State as the team, including all of the one seeds, but the team in the entire bracket that had the easiest path to the Final Four. So it's, that's great news for the Buckeyes. It means that it's not almost exactly even the chances of Syracuse or Wisconsin or Vanderbilt, the three of those teams, making it to the an Elite Eight matchup against what would very likely be and is more than two-thirds of the time Ohio State in that game. What, what the committee already hadn't done as a service to, to Syracuse is put them in a, is put them up against them some, some easier competition. The matchups, in other words, are very difficult for them. And they're, you know, the, the Orange has really struggled to offensively rebound the ball. We saw that against Cincinnati. We saw it against Notre Dame in the past, and that's usually with Mello on the court. It's just the way the zone is. Well, Kansas State, the team they're likely to play in the second round, is the best offensive rebounding team in the country. So I, it was a bad matchup to begin with. You take out and uh, it's essentially a seven-footer who was a great defensive player in the key to that middle of that zone, and it obviously plays a big role. And you could see Syracuse lose by that by the second round and not even make it to the Sweet 16. Yeah, Syracuse is maybe a below-average rebounding team to begin with, and you factor yeah. in Mello's gone, and then adding Kansas State, it could be doom. Okay, the final four from the predictor: Kentucky, Missouri, Ohio State, and North Carolina. How confident are you? How confident is the computer? I guess in that final four. Well. It, 
it, it, I, I'll give you, I'll give you on a case by case basis. We're fifty percent likely, essentially, in in Ohio State and 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 Kentucky each making it to the Final Four. So you can tell those two teams pretty much dominate their regions, and the region set up pretty well for them. And the, in the other regions, the West and the Midwest, it's it's very a very close race between a couple of teams. Michigan State and Missouri in the West. We do have Missouri barely as a little bit as as a little bit more often making it to the Final Four than Michigan State, but it's pretty close there. And I'm sure the the Buckeye fans are very familiar with what Michigan State brings to the table. Missouri had a very an extremely offensive efficient team uh, that uh, they could uh, do some damage in the entire tournament as long as they keep their guys out of foul trouble. And then in the Midwest, it, it's again it's, it's almost identical the numbers between UNC and Kansas. And for that region specifically, if you're looking for double digit seeds to pull up some upsets and make the Sweet 16, we have Cal as South Florida whoever wins that game, and then the uh, the and, and then NC State and Belmont all is about 30 percent likely to make the Sweet 16. So after the top two teams, North Carolina and Kansas, it's completely wide open. Belmont has almost as many as much of a chance to make the Final Four as Georgetown does right now. So uh, if you don't want to take one of those two, you can basically just to throw a dart and to decide which of the other three versus four teams you're going to put in that slot. I'd still say that it's very likely going to be one or either North Carolina or Kansas. It's fascinating stuff. The website predictionmachine.com. Paul Basir joins us here via the Subway Fresh Day Cutline on 97.1 The Fan. The champion, Kentucky. I think that's probably the consensus pick mm-hmm. across America. How, uh, how strong does the predictor feel about the Wildcats? Well, it's 21 percent, which which I know is, doesn't sound like a very, very big number, and it means that about 80 percent of the time, four out of by the time somebody else wins it, but that is the most likely favorite we've had in recent years. I remember talking to you last year, and I believe it was Ohio State as their most likely favorite, but it was only about 12% at the time. So this is almost twice as likely our favorite this year, and Ohio State actually is the next most likely team at 18%. So they have a better chance, especially the way the, the bracket shapes up for them this year, uh, of making it to and winning the national championship than they did last year. I think it's a similar team, similar enough team at least, maybe not as good a three-point shooting team, but probably a little bit better defense defensive team for the Buckeyes, that they could give uh, give at least the entire right side of the bracket some real trouble, and they're the most likely team to come out of there. Between the two of those teams, Kentucky and Ohio State, 40% of all uh, all NCAA tournaments are won in our numbers. Outside of that, the next 20 teams, which include some of those I've mentioned, like Belmont and also Wichita State, New Mexico, etc., the next 20 teams have between a 1% and a 10% shot, so it's wide open after Kentucky and Ohio State. But So you're pretty bullish on the Buckeyes then. We are, we are, and, and, and I know that they lost their last game, but obviously so did Kentucky mm-hmm. and, and North Carolina and several of these other top uh, few teams. The, the biggest concern for the Buckeyes is the same kind of concern that we see out of uh, uh, the same concern that we see for Kentucky or Missouri, and that is depth. And depth is, it maybe, I guess, comparing season over season isn't that much different for Ohio State. They don't shoot the ball from deep nearly as well without John Debo. That's I think well understood. But otherwise, they are the best team from an effic- a defensive efficiency standpoint in the entire nation and offensively, especially relative to the other teams in that region. When you look at the Cincinnati, the Texas, the Florida State, St. Bonaventure, and that's part of the region. There's some teams that really struggle offensively. Ohio State is significantly better than any of those when it comes to that. Paul Basir, PredictionMachine.com, our guest here on 97. When the fan and lunch wrap up, everyone wants an upset special. Who's a team that when you look at it when the computer ran it, who's a team may fly under the radar that you say they could cause some trouble? Well, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you five predicted upsets in the first round, but I'm going to go back to ultimately a theme that I've mentioned a couple times here. The, the upsets that we're predicting by seed, at least, are Purdue over St. Mary's, North Carolina State over San Diego State, uh, UConn over uh, UConn over Iowa State. Uh, the 12 over the 5 and whoever plays against Temple we would have his favorite at this point it's either Florida, South Florida or California Mm -hmm. and the most unfortunate one for me and then maybe some people listening out there because it's my alma mater but you can tell there's no bias here because we have Texas beating Cincinnati as a likely upset in the first round so all those are more likely than not to be upsets but there's some 50-50 games here that I would watch out for as well and one of them is Belmont. We have all the four teams as around 40-50% to likely to win their games over the threes it shows you that this is a deep bracket outside of those top couple seeds where just about all of the, no- the seeds from 3 to 14 are pretty interchangeable. Uh, and Belmont being a significant one there. And if you're looking for teams that can make deep runs that that may be in the kind of 5 to 8 range, Wichita State, New Mexico, and Memphis are some very talented, well-constructed, and at this point experienced teams that uh, that could really surprise some people by making it to the Sweet 16 or further. I want to mention as well, because Paul's a buddy of ours, even though he's a UC fan, we still love him. Uh, PredictionMachine.com uh, does it for all the sports, not just 
just college basketball, but certainly most people fill out the, the brackets in the office pool. So this time of year, the website really gets a workout. Paul, we appreciate it. Enjoy March Madness. We'll hopefully catch up with you next week for the Sweet 16. Sounds great. Thanks a lot, man.